Okay, in this video we want to look at a special type of relation known as an equivalence relation. So recall that a relation is just a subset of the cross product of a set with itself. And we call that relation an equivalence relation if it satisfies the, these three following properties. So A comma A is an R for all A in A. In other words, A is related to itself. So this is called reflexivity. If A comma B is an R, then B comma A is an R. So in other words, if A is related to B, then B is related to A. And that's called symmetry. And then finally, if A comma B is an R and B comma C is an R, then A comma C is in R, and that's called transitivity. So in other words, if A and B are related, and B and C are related, then A and C are related. So let's look at some examples. So uh, the first example that I want to look at is uh, kind of, okay, so the first two examples we're going to look at are really important, but they're kind of boring, and that first one is R is equality. So in other words, A um, comma B is in R if and only if A equals B. Good. And then from uh, the end of elementary school or junior high or something, you learn that these properties are satisfied by equality. So this is obviously an equivalence relation. And um, if equality was not an equivalence relation, then maybe this term equivalence relation would be a bad term for this kind of uh, setup. So um, there's that too. Okay. And so another one I want to look at is R is nothing. So uh, by that I mean that A comma B is in R for all A and B in A. So what I mean is everything is related to everything else. So as a set, that means um, R equals A cross A. It's the largest subset of A cross A. Um, so this is definitely an equivalence relation, but if this equality equivalence relation up here is too fine of a sieve, so it uh, separates things out too much, then this one is too coarse. It doesn't separate the set into anything at all. Everything in the set is equivalent to everything else. Okay, great. So um, the next one I want to look at is motivated from calculus, and that is I'll let A be equal to um, all differentiable functions. Uh, maybe from R to R. Good. And what we'll say is we'll say that f is related to g if and only if f prime is equal to g prime. So in other words, they have the same derivative. Okay, good. So it's easy to check that that is an equivalence relation as well. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at the notion of an equivalence class. Okay, so now that we've looked at the notion of an equivalence relation, we look at the complementary notion of, of an equivalence class. So given any equivalence relation R of the set A, so again, that's a subset of A cross A with those three properties that we just talked about, the equivalence class of an element A in A is given by the following. So we usually put brackets around this element A to mean the equivalence class. And this is all of the elements B in A that are related to A. So in other words, the ordered pair A comma B is in R. So uh, let's look at some examples. So again, let's take A with equality being the equivalence relation. And now notice that the equivalence class of A in this case, well, let's write it out by the definition. So this is all B in A such that A equals B. But notice, there's nothing going on here. This is just the singleton A. Okay, good. 
Now, let's look at A, where R is nothing, like before. So, in other words, everything is related to everything else. And now, notice if we take any element A here, and we take its equivalence class, this is going to be all B in A, such that A comma B is in R. But remember, R in this case was just the whole set A cross A anyway which tells us that any element from A uh, satisfies this. So this gives you the whole set. Okay, so now we'll look at that last example. So let's take A to be differentiable functions. And let's say that f is related to g if and only if f prime is equal to g prime. Good. And now notice we can take the equivalence class of f to be equal to all g in a, where f prime is equal to g prime. But we can uh, change that around a little bit. So notice that is all functions g in a such that um, f minus g quantity prime equals zero. Good. So what did I do? I subtracted g, pr g prime from both sides, and then I used the sum rule for the derivative to bring the prime out of the sum. Good. But now we know that the only type of function whose derivative is zero is a constant. That means f minus g equals a constant. And so it follows that this is really just all of the functions f plus some constant c where that constant is just a real number. So in other words, it's just the function f plus some other constant. And this should look really familiar from integration. So whenever you take an integral, you, uh, if it's a, so whenever you take an improper integral, you also, you always have to add this constant on. So what you're actually looking at is the equivalence class of all antiderivatives in that case. Okay, good. So this is a good place to stop this video.